What the fuck? Team Fortress 2 is an unusual game. It's a game that has stood the test of time, and its success is owed entirely to its clever design decisions made by the developers. But like I said, the game is very unusual. Oh, haha, ha, very funny. No, that's not the type of unusual I was talking about, all right? Because where TF2 has this kind of unusual, it also has another kind of unusual. Yes. I <laughs> <laughs> the stupid design decision type of unusual. TF2 has some of the weirdest, most counterintuitive, and downright stupid design decisions that I've ever seen in any video game. It's one of my favourite games of all time, and it is by far my most played game. But yet it has some of the worst design choices that I've ever come across. In fact, random crits might actually be the worst design decision I've ever seen in any video game in my life. Hands down. Just a percent chance that your next attack deals triple damage, for no reason. The devs say it's to break stalemates, but we all know that crits don't actually achieve that, even on the old and terrible maps that TF2 was designed alongside. And speaking of maps, the map design is comically bad in some cases, left over from when Team Fortress looked more like this. Oh, and trust me, the map was still bad back then, all the way back in 1999, but somehow the 2007 version is even worse. There's also the little things, you know? Know, like the Pyro's air blast prevents you from air strafing, which makes it impossible for blast jumping classes to outplay the air blast in certain scenarios. There's a ton of weapons that are completely useless, and a ton more weapons that are insanely oppressive. There's a whole big list of complaints to be had with Team Fortress 2. Despite it being an incredible video game, it isn't flawless. Hmm, it's almost like someone should make a video where they talk, like, in depth about everything they find frustrating about Team Fortress 2. I wonder if anyone's ever made one of those and then linked it in the description and the sidebar of this video. Hmm. I guess we'll never know. But there's one topic left to be discussed that I think is a whole lot bigger than all these other things. And it is intrinsically baked into the game's design in a very big way. Because you can just turn off random crits, or you can just play on the good maps. But you can't remove classes from the game. The issue involves these two guys. The spy and the sniper are what we in the business like to call pick classes. Their entire role in the game is to get a single high priority kill. They're like an assassin class. They are the only two pick classes in the game, unless you count, like, Demo Knight, I guess. But in the good old days of 2007, these were the only two pick classes. The Spy is a fantastic class in TF2, don't get me wrong. It's probably the weakest class in the game, since Spy sees absolutely no competitive play, and it requires a ton of setup and luck to ever actually be successful. And being successful as Spy becomes incredibly difficult the moment the enemy players have functioning eyes and ears. But that's fine, because Spy is incredibly rewarding, because it does doesn't always go well, but when it does go well, you feel like you've just conquered the world. Oh my god, these players are getting pooed on! I'm the best spy in the world! It takes tons of setup and time to get behind enemies. It requires patience, waiting for the perfect time to go in for the kill, and most importantly, it's high risk and high reward. When you kill an enemy as spy, you are in incredible danger, because so long as the enemy has functioning eyes and ears, they know that their teammate just got backstabbed. Now the spy does have a lot of tools to help him get out of those dangerous situations, and he also has a lot of tools to make him less detectable before and after getting his kills. But even with these tools, it's not particularly hard to kill a spy who just revealed himself to the world. But despite being weak and not particularly competitively viable, and getting worse as enemy players get better, the Spy is still so rewarding and so exciting to play that he fits in the game beautifully. The Spy's design is incredible. He has very obvious soft counter matchups, but he isn't completely helpless against them. He has very obvious strengths against certain other classes that makes him strong in certain situations. And he has an incredibly high skill ceiling to just run around demolishing the entire enemy team. Although sometimes he does get nerfed by janky melee mechanics because TF2 is an old game. Like, how is this not his back? But then this one, this one's a backstab, no. apparently. I stabbed that guy directly in the face. <laughs> but even despite that, the spy fits right into Team Fortress 2's core gameplay loop. 
He interacts wonderfully with all of the other classes in the game. But then we get onto the other guy. Good eye. The problem child. The sniper does basically everything the spy does. He takes out high priority targets. He requires setup to do so. And he's strong against the exact same classes that the spy is strong against. But there's something missing. What's missing is that risk versus reward factor. The spy has to make huge risks to get high priority kills or to go on a chain stab. But what risk does this idiot have to take? He shoots me from Mars. Look at how far away he is. He's not even on the same planet as I am. Before I died, he took up about two pixels on my screen and he instantly kills me from all the way over there. The only risk he had to take was that if he missed, he would have to take a third of a second to reload his bullet and try again. But that's not even the biggest issue to me because even if I did see that guy, there isn't anything I can actually do about it. Unless I myself am also playing sniper, there is nothing I can actually do to interact with that player. The only counter play I have is not enter this player part of the map. Just avoid the sniper sightlines. But depending on what map you're playing, the sniper sightlines can vary wildly in size. Maps like Upward and Thunder Mountain and Swiftwater. These maps are well known for their Australian tourism industry. The sniper sightlines here cover half of the entire map. You can try and counter it. You can start bobbing and weaving to try and make it harder for the sniper to shoot your head. But most of the time this isn't all that effective. A good sniper hits these shots anyway. These two classes have the exact same goal in mind. They do the exact same thing, but one of them requires almost no setup, has far fewer counters, and has none of the risk involved. Everything Spy can do, Sniper does better. If you want to kill a sentry nest, the Spy has to get up to the sentry nest and somehow backstab the engineer, all without being spotted. Sniper can just kill the engineer from all the way over here in Narnia and then take down the sentry gun with pot shots. Practically any pick a Spy could get, a Sniper could also get, but from a safe distance. Now the Sniper's strength is heavily dictated by map design, because for every map that's incredibly good for Sniper, with absolutely enormous sightlines, there's also maps that aren't as good for the class. Maps where Sniper sightlines are far more balanced and have far more blind spots and flank routes, but that doesn't really matter. A sniper can still kill you from a different continent if you do happen to enter the sightline. It's easier to avoid the sightline on more balanced maps, but it doesn't solve the problem of interactivity. Because sniper is uninteractive, that's the problem. The class has almost no interaction with other players for 90% of the game. The only time you interact with an enemy player while playing sniper is by shooting them in the head before they even knew you existed, or being shot in the head by an enemy sniper that you didn't know existed. There's the edge case of spies, sneaking up on you, or scouts flanking you, or a soldier with the beggar's bazooka flying at their face at supersonic speeds with a shovel. Oh, you got someone? Nice. But these are rare scenarios. For the vast majority of the time, the sniper's gameplay just looks like this peacefully taking his shots. He barely even exists until he kills an enemy player. He's a long-ranged assassin in a game where every other class and subclass in existence is effective only at medium or close range. The only long-ranged class is the sniper, therefore there are few ways to interact with the sniper unless you yourself also play that class. And the worst part about all of this is that there's no change that they could possibly make to the sniper that would fix this problem. I see lots of people make suggested balance changes to the sniper that would somehow solve all this. Maybe make quickscope headshots only deal 120 damage. Maybe reduce body shot damage. Make it so that loading the next shot after missing takes longer. Or even reducing his ammo count to force him to leave his powerful sightline more often. But all of these changes would only address the balance side of things. They might make the sniper more balanced, but they still wouldn't make sniper fun. The core issue with Sniper, at least in my opinion, is nothing to do with balance. Because sure, you can argue that Sniper is overpowered, but you could also say that Demo and his stickies are overpowered too. The sticky bomb launcher is probably the best weapon in the whole game. You could also argue that Medic is overpowered, since it is absolutely vital to a team's success, and simply killing a Medic pretty much guarantees a successful push. The Sniper is probably overpowered, but that's not really the problem. The issue is that there's almost no counterplay or interactivity with the class. The class doesn't participate in the game in the same way that the rest of the classes do. He doesn't fit in. He stands out as being very clearly different than the other classes, and he makes the game worse for it. There's nothing that they could possibly do to make it fun to die to a pick class. But at least when a spy kills you, you know that he had to do a bunch of sneaking beforehand. Or at least when you die to a demo knight, you know that that guy will get owned by a mini sentry engineer in about five minutes. At least you understand that there's obvious risks involved in what they're doing. But that just doesn't exist for the sniper. And you know what? I'm not even done ranting about sniper. And this next part is going to be really controversial. It's going to make all the sniper mains really, really angry. The 
sniper class is easy. Don't believe me? The next time you load up Team Fortress 2, play Sniper and equip either the Machina or the Sydney Sleeper. And don't even try and go for headshots. If you hit a headshot, good for you, just a happy accident. But you don't even need to hit your headshots to be an effective class. You still dominate the entire map. Most classes die in one hit to a full charge body shot anyway. I mean, playing in this way does guarantee that you will go to the lowest circle of hell when you die, the same circle that Hitler and Stalin are hanging out in, but you will be effective hitting your little body shots all the way from across the map. You can quite easily top score this way, because Sniper is an easy class, and he's easy by design. Every single class in Team Fortress 2 is designed to be easy to learn, but hard to master. Low skill floor, but high skill ceiling. This is done so that a brand new player who installed the game 15 minutes ago can pick up any of the nine classes and still have a fun time. They'll be less effective than a 5,000 hour player and they'll have less options available to them, but no matter what class they choose, they will still be able to participate on a baseline level. The classes are very simple and easy to understand, even if you're brand new at the game. You have a rough idea of what a spy should be doing, or any of the other classes, because it's intuitive and it's easy to pick up. But if you want to spend 5,000 hours mastering a single class, you can do that too. There's no end to how good you can get at all of the nine classes, because they have tons of intricate and unique mechanics, and tons of skill in their execution, and tons of strategic decisions to be made. You can put in a nearly infinite amount of practice to any of the nine classes, and you will be rewarded for it in one way or another. And this is a good thing. In my opinion, this is one of the reasons that TF2 is still so successful to this day. But when you have a class that's core design philosophy conflicts with all of the rest of the classes in TF2, and is leaning on the overpowered and oppressive side of the balance spectrum, suddenly the ease of access to all the nine classes becomes a problem, because accessing Sniper and being effective at it is not that hard to do. Objectively speaking, it is easy. No one really has a hard time hitting full charged body shots. But the sniper is incredibly powerful and oppressive with a relatively low skill floor. Yeah, a newer sniper player is going to be less effective than a veteran sniper player who hits all their headshots, but a newer sniper still gets to instantly kill a high priority target from across the map with almost no counterplay whatsoever. It's just that when the new player does it, it takes them a little bit longer because they have to wait to charge up their shot. The spy and even the demo knight both have very clear downsides, and they require risks to get in a position to kill their target, and they require patience to wait for the right moment to strike. The sniper requires a small amount of patience, but has a very small number of downsides, with practically no risk whatsoever in doing anything they ever do. And they dominate the entire field just by existing. Just the threat of a headshot can make you avoid an entire segment of the map. Sniper, to me, is very clearly a problem child in Team Fortress 2's design, and there's no solution to this problem that could possibly be made. To be honest, it's wishful thinking expecting Valve to change anything in the game at this point. Thanks for watching.